Hi, I'm Matt Kaiser. Today I'm going to talk through the process of putting together a lighting design. Lighting design is about making choices. It is about arranging equipment in the performance space so that you are best prepared to create art that supports a performance. Let's start with one actor. We'll just point one light at her. There are a few things we can choose even with just one white front light. The light can hit her face from a low angle or from a high one. Low angle lighting illuminates faces really well. It also overshoots upstage the performers into the space behind them. Steep angle lighting creates heavier shadows on faces and bodies. It creates tighter areas of lighting on the floor too. No matter whether it is a steep angle or a low angle, it can also come from the front or from a side angle. Light from the front is effective and thorough. It can flatten out features a little. Light that is from off center creates shadows on one side. This is good for sculpting, but it can create some visibility issues. This source direction favors audience on the actor's right and might cause problems for people seated more stage left. Depending on where we can hang it, we might need to choose one type of instrument over another. Let's figure out how to create exactly the look shown here. There are lots of different types of lighting instruments. This instrument could create the desired look, but we can't hang it in empty space. This instrument has a more narrow field. Maybe it will help. Let's move it upwards. It looks like the cone of light that it creates is too narrow for our needs. This one, however, will do just what we want when we hang it on our grid. Different lighting instruments have different lenses and they shoot light out in differently shaped cones. Now let's consider how this key looks from a seat over to the side of the playing space. If you're sitting over to one side, you can see her, but she's kind of shadowy. This isn't necessarily bad. The shadows flatter the shape of her face and form, but if she turns this way, her face will be dark. So let's add a second light to this and spread the two lights apart. This reduces the shadows, but it also reduces the sculpting. The light is no longer as dramatic. A strong choice to make at this point is to keep light coming from multiple directions, but use it to simulate light and shadow by using different colors. In this scene, we're using pink and blue. The pink is coming from stage left, and it creates the illusion of a light source. The blue is coming from stage right, and it creates the illusion of shadow without actually leaving half of her face dark. We establish a warm color to emulate the light source. We fill in from the other side using a cool color to emulate shadows. A steep angle backlight usually completes the composition when we do this arrangement. This method is rooted in a system conceived by a designer named Stanley McCandless. McCandless is considered the father of modern lighting design. Though there are many methods of lighting used today, his is considered the foundation of the craft. It is worth noting that the use of color to create highlight and shadow was also employed by impressionist painters like Claude Monet. With our current setup, we can only generate one look unless we want to plunge part of the actor's face into darkness. If we light only one side or the other, we ignore audience to the left or the right of the actor. We can add versatility to this arrangement by adding more colors. We could have a second set of lights from the front with different colors. We can also add lights from other directions. With more lights to choose from, we can make different looks for different moments, settings, and time of day. By mixing colors from a single direction, we can create more colors like ambers and magentas. By surrounding the actors with light, we ensure that all of our audience can follow the storytelling no matter where they are sitting. So far, so good. However, this little arrangement of lights that we have so far will not let us light an entire stage. The lights that we use generally are good for filling an area from six feet up to about 12 feet wide. When they are shooting too far, the field becomes too wide. It becomes dimmer and less useful. We perform a little magic trick at this point in the process. 
we allow ourselves to take this entire system of lights and duplicate it into other areas. We break up the stage into circles. We mark the center of each and we copy our lighting plan consistently to surround each area. If we bring up groups of lights with the same color at once, it looks like a single source coming from one direction. We usually arrange these to conform to a specific set or performance space. By covering the entire space with areas, we can treat the entire stage like one big, consistent performance area. Here you see all of the top light for every area. By mixing the colors that we have available, we can create combinations of warm and cool. The really important thing is to arrange the lights consistently so that the same colors hit each area from the same direction. In this design, no matter where you go on stage, the cyan is coming from downstage left. If this actor goes anywhere on stage with these specific lights up, her shadow will always point in the same direction. Here's the same effect using the red top lights instead. Notice the consistency of the shadows. A group of lights that can work together from one direction like this is called a wash. Washes are combined to make new colors and new looks. They're a building block for cues. Units within a wash can be brought up in smaller groups or individually. They do not have to all come up at once. We're going to keep this simple for this demo though. Not every instrument in a design is part of a wash. This window gobo at center stage is the only one of these in this entire design. And here's a little spotlight on these shutters up center. And here's some light for the stairs upright through that archway. These are important lights that are separate from the regular washes. These lights are called specials. All of these design choices are planned out. The beginning of the design might look like this. We're going to need something with a lot more information and accuracy though. Most of our lights are going to be hung on pipes up above the stage. Some theaters have battens called electrics, others have a grid. We need to create a light plot that shows every light that needs to be hung. The light plot is a drawing that emphasizes all of the places in a theater venue where lighting instruments can be hung. The acting areas are important, though they are not always shown on the final plot. We locate the instruments for one area, the same as we did earlier in our planning. It's important to consider the distance and the angle to the actor's face for each instrument placed. The angle of incident to the actor's face is a part of the design. Also, the throw distance will strongly influence the type of light that is used. Determine reasonable positions to place lighting instruments. Assign them to the pipe nearest their ideal position. Do this for the first area, then imitate these positions for all of the other areas. What you end up with is a drawing that shows all of your lighting instruments with notes. The notes might tell us what color is in the instrument, where it is focused, or how it is hung. A lighting design might include a lot of instruments. Keeping track of these on the light board can be complicated. In a lighting design, instruments are assigned special numbers called channels. Channels are patched into the lighting console. They're what the computer uses to control the instruments. A good design has a system of channels that's easy to remember. Writing cues should be casual and fun. It should not require the designer to constantly look up numbers. The end goal for all this process is really simple. There will come a time when the lighting designer is creating visual art to support the show. A good design will provide lots of great options for any cue. By having lots of good choices available, it's easy to work with directors, choreographers, producers, and other designers. Like any other kind of art, it's always done best when it's done from a mindset of rest and fun. Having a great light plot hung and focused in the venue is the best start. Having relaxed, easy control of it is the next step. After that, it's all collaboration and art. And that's all I'm going to include in this video today. I hope that this has been useful. This video was originally made for my Intro to Theater Design class at Plymouth State University during the coronavirus quarantine. It's being shared with the community of technical theater educators. If you are a high school student considering theater, 
please check us out.